to the Practical Prophetic, where prophetic ministry is made practical. I'm Beth Wingate, I'm your host, and welcome to the podcast. On our podcast today, we are going to talk about NASA rockets and the ironic blessing. And you may be wondering what those have in common. So I hope I got your attention today. Well, let me start off by talking about NASA, which stands for the National Aeronautical Space Administration. And so it was invented by our government in 1958, post-World War II, as we were headed into the Cold War, and we began an arms race with mainly Russia, and it was a response to Sputnik. And so, uh, and then you can Google some of these things. It involved Operation Paperclip. Warner Von Braun was sort of the father of NASA and our rocket program, who had been a German scientist. And Huntsville, Alabama, which is not too far from where I live, the hub of NASA where Von Braun really set up his shop. And as a kid, I remember like fourth and then again in sixth grade or it seems like almost every year our school would take a field trip to NASA and we would tour the facility and look at the rockets and there was some massive uh, rockets out front you know that uh, had been built that you could look at there was an SR-71 Blackbird which was our first real spy plane And uh, when we were there, the highlight of the trip, for me at least, was the space food. I loved to get the little freeze-dried ice cream. I don't know why that was a big deal to me, but it was. So NASA really has been a part of my childhood and growing up. And a few years ago, we went with some family, and they had uh, their grandson with them, and so uh, and our kids, and we went back to NASA. And while we were there, it was really interesting to look at all of those rockets and, and things as an adult. You know, when you're a child, it's just amazing. And, you you know, wow, that's been to outer, you know, you're thinking, wow, that's been to outer space. And so it was interesting to go back and have a different perspective as you uh, get older. Same thing like when you go to Disney or places like that. It's a little different when you get older. What got me thinking about all of this was Elon Musk and SpaceX and Tesla and, and how that our space program has really sort of been reinvigorated. I mean, Elon Musk has done something amazing where he not only sends a rocket up, but then they come back and land, which is just absolutely amazing. The boosters that push the uh, capsule into outer space comes back and lands. And if you have not watched some of those videos, it really is is amazing. I'm like, how in the way is this real? <laughs> how did they do this? And so SpaceX has a- actually partnered with NASA. They actually have a contract to just build uh, the boosters and then to launch their uh, Starlink satellites, which in the future, I think what Elon Musk is trying to do is instead of having cell phones with cell towers, we will at some point transition to satellite telephones that can be used anywhere in the world. And if you live like I do in an area that's uh, hilly, uh, then you understand that uh, you don't always get cell signal. There's still places I drive and I know that I'm going to drop a call and I'll tell the person on the other end of the phone, hey, you know, I'm about to go through this spot. If it drops, just I'll call you right back. So anyway, it got me thinking about the space program, about NASA, and there's a Hebrew word that I've known for a long time that I want to share with you, and it's con- all of this is connected to a Torah portion and to the Aaronic blessing, and I'm going to tie all these together, and hopefully this will be a catchy way for you to remember this principle and this concept, which really has prophetic power in your life. So if you're not familiar with the Torah portions, Torah portions are the regular reading schedule, sort of like a devotional, that Jewish people and Messianic uh, Jewish people, which are Jews who are Christians and Christians who have adopted uh, Hebrew roots of their faith. It's a scheduled reading program all over the world that Jews read throughout the calendar year. And it consists of the first five books of the Bible, which is called the Torah. That's the law that Moses wrote. So that's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. For those of you who are not reading your Old Testament, you're really missing out because there's some stories and principles and patterns and a lot of prophetic parallels 
embedded in your Old Testament that really complete the New Testament. They really complement one another. Uh, And Jesus did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And we can't go down that road right now of really parsing all of that out, but I'll just park it right there. But this is the way I've always heard it taught, that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed, meaning with the revelation of Jesus as Messiah as the king. And so just to keep it very basic and very simple, that's the overarching idea here. So they have the Torah portions. And by the way, just a side note here, the Torah portions are so powerful. They're connected to the seven feast days. You really, once you dig into those, and there's a website, I'll put it in this description box called Hebrew for the number four christians.com it'd be a great starting place for you if you're interested in the torah portions from a christian perspective it's so powerful you really do get into the sync and timing and rhythm of uh prophecy of what the lord is saying in the old testament in the bible and once you understand those then you understand that all of the major events in the new testament were on this schedule and so it was based on Uh, seed time and harvest, an agrarian schedule, and it's cyclical. And so Hebrew thought on time is not linear like the way that we think. We, We have Greek thought. And so we think very linear, like a long timeline. But Hebrew thought is cyclical, and it's tied to uh, the earth. It's tied to seed time and harvest, to the moon, to the sun. So it's a whole different way of thinking where everything is cyclical. And you sort of get these themes or patterns of like what goes around comes around, or these are this is a cycle of time. This is a, pat- a familiar pattern in history. And so once you get into sync with these concepts, there's so much prophetic power. Uh, it's unbelievable. And so uh, I don't want to go too far down that road either. Sometimes it's so hard to stay on task because there's so much I want to share. But uh, the Torah portions have a scheduled reading, and they're connected to one of the, you know, a handful of chapters in the Old Testament in those first five books of your Bible called the Torah, which what Moses wrote all of the Torah. So this is all from the writings of Moses. Now, one of those portions that's typically read in the summertime is called Nasso, N-A-S-S-O, and the root word for that is Nasa, N-A-S-A. So now you can kind of see where I'm going. So this Torah portion means to lift up, to take up, and it can even mean to snatch up or to to uh, really quickly lift up. And so this Torah portion is so powerful, and there's so many lessons embedded in this. That's the beauty of the Torah portions, too, is even though you're reading the same thing on a schedule every year for a week, uh, there's so many variations because there's so much information just packed in to these lessons, and they're so powerful. But uh, one of the concepts that is talked about in this Torah portion is tied to the Aaronic blessing. And I really believe this will uh, be like a rocket to your faith. This will really propel you to a new level if you'll grasp this concept because it's just so powerful. When The first time I heard this, it was just unbelievable. And then I shared it at Bible study. And I'm just going to tell you, we had a moment. We had just a supernatural encounter as we went through this study. And uh, it was powerful. There was just about five or six of us at the Bible study at that time. We were meeting in the mornings at a Chick-fil-A. And I'm telling you, the Lord showed up in the (laughs) Chick-fil-A. Yes, the biscuits were anointed. But the word that God had to uh, show us that morning was even more powerful and more anointed. So I want to dig into this for just a minute. I'm going to tie all these together for us. Um, I'm first going to talk about NASA. So Like I said, NASA was developed in 1958 under the direction of General and then President Eisenhower, Dwight D. Eisenhower, as part of the Cold War. And uh, there were several people involved. Uh, There was an act called the uh, National Aeronautical Space Act, and then it was the acronym of NASA. There had been another department that had NACA before that, but uh, there was a man involved very early on named Dr. Abe Silverstein. Uh, of course, having a name like Silverstein, he's obviously Jewish. And he was a rocket rocketry jet propulsion pioneer. 
And uh, it's believed that he's the one that pushed for this acronym. I can't say for certain, but uh, if he was a Jewish man, he would have known the Torah portions and he would have been aware of the word NASA and what it meant. So I'm of the belief that he's the one that sort of pushed for this acronym to stay the name for NASA. And I'll tell you why I think that, because NASA means to blast off, to lift up, to take up. And so it's such a powerful representation of this Hebrew word. And this Hebrew word is embedded and connected to the Aaronic blessing. Now, in the Torah portion, that if you went to your synagogue, you know, for, for Shabbat service during this uh, Torah portion week, this blessing, the Aaronic blessing, would be recited. Absolutely. In fact, it's typically recited at every time you would go to synagogue or temple. And so this is just so powerful. So let me back up and talk about Moses. Moses went up on the mountain at Mount Sinai eight different times, one of those receiving the Ten Commandments. But he also received from the Lord instructions on the temple, how to lay things out, how to build things, the priest, how to administer services. I mean, just basically how to do everything. It's where Moses got the law. And so uh, one of the things that Moses received from the Lord up on Mount Sinai was how the priest which was Aaron and his sons, how they were to pray over the people. And God was very specific about how this was to be done. So in Numbers 6, starting in verse 22, Aaron is given instructions from Moses that came directly from God. And this is what he says. And it says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses. So this is Yahweh God on Mount Sinai speaking to Moses, saying, Verse 23, speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, on this wise shall you bless the children of Israel, saying unto him. In other words, here's exactly how I want you to say a blessing over the children of Israel. Okay. Uh, By the way, uh, the priest would take their hands. Now, if you're familiar with Star Trek, and remember, Spock would divide his ring finger and his middle finger and uh, do the, you know, the Star Trek salute, basically, that Spock would do. Well, the priest, actually, Leonard Nimoy was also Jewish, and so he came up with that based on probably seeing priest uh, do that as he was growing up. This is a common Jewish blessing. So what you would do is you would take your uh, two fingers, if you were the priest, and at the middle there between your ring finger and your tall finger, you would middle finger and your uh, ring finger, you would divide your fingers right there. Not everybody can do it. And you would have your thumbs out. And you would basically, by doing that, you would make the letter sheen which is a Hebrew letter. In fact, that's where we get the word Shaddai, like El Shaddai. And so what you would do is you were making a letter that was symbolic of God's name. So you would uh, symbolically with your hands, you would make this Hebrew letter, which was representative of the name of God. So that was just a something that people could look to to say, hey, this is from God, this blessing. And here's what you would say. The priest would say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And then he went on to say, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Oh my goodness, we can just plow right here. So the priest would do this symbol representative of putting God's name on the people and speaking God's words over the people. Because Moses understood, even though he was the leader, these were God's people. And Aaron was given specific instructions on how to bless the people. And so let me break this down. This prayer was broken into three parts. So it would be, the Lord bless you and keep you. That's part number one. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. That's part number two. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. That's part number three. Now, it's called 
the three-in-one blessing. You could, by extension, say this is a Trinitarian blessing. Now, Jews uh, reject Jesus as Messiah. They believe that Yahweh God is one. We can't get into that debate. But as a Christian, I believe in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, I believe this blessing reflects that. That's my view. This three-part blessing, and I would even go a step further and say this blessing is an outer court, inner court, and holy of holies blessing based on the pattern, the prophetic pattern of the temple. And so this blessing is so powerful. Now, this would have been prayed over uh, the people for the morning offering. So this would have been prayed over them every day and then uh, at special times of the year again. But this was, a, this was a daily blessing over the people. Now, let's, uh, let's look at this prayer in Hebrew. So the King James, you have to remember, 1611, it's Old English. Think of uh, how they talked in movies like Monty Python or maybe an old period piece type movie. So the language is a little different. It's a little uh, simpler than the Hebrew. Like I said, in Hebrew, uh, you can have, for example, we would say the word Coke. Well, what do you mean by that? We have Coke. Cherry Coke, Diet Coke, Caffeine Free Coke. I mean, you know, we got so Coke Zero, so many options, but it all means Coke. Well, it's very similar in Hebrew. Hebrew is much more specific, much broader. And so let me read this blessing to you as it's tra- like transliterated from the Hebrew, a better translation, if you will. It would say it like this Yahweh will kneel before you presenting gifts he will guard you with a hedge of protection Yahweh will illuminate the wholeness of his being toward you bringing order he will provide you with love sustenance and friendship Yahweh will lift up the wholeness of his being and look at you He will set in place all you need to be whole and complete. So I will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Oh, my goodness. It's so much fuller that way. And by the way, we are grafted in because of the work Jesus did on the cross. And this blessing applies to us also. But how powerful is that? Yahweh will kneel before you. Wait, wait, what? That blows my mind. He is God. You know, what is happening? Oh, my goodness. God loves us so much, and he wants to bless us so much. You cannot miss the power packed into this blessing. So powerful. We could really dig deeper. I went a little fast over that. Let me read that one more time because it really is powerful. Listen to this as as it's translated from the original Hebrew into English. It says, Yahweh will kneel before you presenting gifts. He will guard you with a hedge of protection. Yahweh will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards you, bringing order. Hallelujah. And he will provide you with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yahweh will lift up the wholeness of his being and look upon you and will set in place all you need to be whole and complete. So I will put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. Oh, my goodness. And by the way, when you hear the word lift up in there, it's the Hebrew word nasa. Now, this word also can mean to burden, and it means to burden in the sense that he will take on or lift your your burdens off of you, your sins off of you, and take them upon himself. Oh, my goodness. Like a rocket. I hope this is blessing you the way it's blessing me. Let me also connect this to one other place. Now, this word and this act of the ironic blessing is going to show up In the Greek equivalent, now this this act that we've seen, the ironic blessing where the priest would lift up his hands and make the name of God and then figuratively put that onto the people through this blessing, we're going to see this come again in the New Testament. 
Oh, my goodness. Buckle your seatbelt, put your trays in the upright position, and pay attention to where the exit doors are. Here we go. (laughs) All right. In Luke 24, verse 50 through 50, about two, we're going to go here to the transfiguration. And we're going to see Jesus before he ascends. It's called the ascension into heaven. We're going to see him do something amazing. He says here, and he led them out as far as to Bethany and he lifted up his hands. NASA. And, and this would have been the Greek equivalent, which is called hoopso. All right. It says, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up Hoopso, which is that a Greek equivalent of NASA, into heaven. You guys, most scholars believe he performed the ironic blessing over Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. And then whew, he shot up like a rocket. NASA. Oh, my goodness. Let's read that in another account of the gospel. In Mark chapter 16, verse 19, it says, So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God. Did they see that? Is that what they saw? And then in Acts, in the first chapter, Verse 19, it says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, hoopso, which is that Greek equivalent of NASA. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. And it says that was Elijah and Moses. Okay, so we see that the ironic blessing was performed at Mount Sinai and and for Moses uh, when Aaron would do this over the people in the wilderness. And then we see Jesus do this before the ascension. How powerful is that? I love this. NASA. So when you think about how God wants to bless you, how that God is, Jesus is our high priest. He is speaking this blessing over you as a child of God. Every day, the Lord speaks this over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up NASA, his countenance upon thee and give thee peace and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Oh, how powerful. Just so powerful. I really hope this blesses you. I hope you caught this. Uh, this just the NASA part was so interesting to me because we have a visual representation of the power, the uplifting power of God's blessing and how those rockets are sent up into a house over the whole earth and to quote the heavens. And so when God blesses you, it really does elevate your spirit and you touch heaven, so to speak. And God wants to rain blessings down on you. I'm going to leave us with uh, Jonathan Kahn reciting the ironic blessing in Hebrew. And if you've never heard this, it is so powerful. You are God's people, and so this is for you. I'm going to ask, uh, receive it not from man, but as from the Lord. In the language of Messiah, the language of the Bible, in Hebrew, if you will lift up your hands and close your eyes to receive.
of God. The Lord keep you in the palm of his hand. The Lord God of heaven and earth cause his face to shine on you, his servant, upon all the works of your hands. The Lord God of heaven pour out from heaven the rivers of his grace upon you. The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, the Ancient of Days, cause the glory of his presence to be upon you, his child, upon your house, upon your home, upon your heart, upon your life. And the Lord give to you the fullness of his shalom, life, fullness, peace, all the blessings of his love. Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name above every name, the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Or how long the light of this world, Uchvod Yisrael, the glory of Israel, the Ari, Yehuda, and the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. for listening to today's podcast. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll be informed next time I post. Thank you again and have a blessed day.